Good morning. Thanks for joining us and a belated happy Thanksgiving to all our viewers. Well, formal business is finished for the year up on Beacon Hill with some very important pieces of legislation awaiting action after the first of the year. Well, this morning we're discussing some of those and where we're headed with the president of the Massachusetts Senate, State Senator Stanley Rosenberg of Amherst. Mr. President, good morning. Good morning. Thanks Thank you for, for coming here. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Thank you. So we're halfway through the two-year legislative session. Mm -hmm. And a lot of important bills dealing, for instance, with energy costs, opioid abuse, the charter school cap are still awaiting action. But let's look back for a moment before we look ahead. What's the most important thing you did get done this year? From my point of view and in the Senate's point of view, I think two big things. The earned income tax credit was approved, helping about 400,000 families get uh, more uh, tax relief. Uh, these are people who go to work every day. They don't make a lot of money. And uh, the federal government set up an earned income tax credit. 18 years ago, we joined and created at, a, at the state level a similar uh, tax credit, but it hadn't been adjusted for 18 years. And we adjusted it. It was something yeah. Governor Patrick, uh, sorry, Governor Baker campaigned on. I joined him on swearing in day saying, let's uh, get this done this year. We were able to increase it by 50 percent. And the other thing you wanted and to mention? And the other thing was shared leadership in the Senate, a new model of uh, engaging the members, engaging the committee chairs, and engaging with the public. What about the MBTA reform? That was a pretty that big was, deal. That was significant. Are you proud of that? Uh, we, uh, you know, the Senate at first was not crazy about the idea of a separate uh, management control board. Uh, we ended up with a version that the Senate wrote uh, during the budget process, which ended up in law. We're happy with that because it blends MassDOT board members with a few people from outside. And when those few people from the outside go away, all of the institutional knowledge of what was done in that control board will still sit on the MassDOT board because the majority of the control board are actually MassDOT members. Mr. President, fair to say you have a good working relationship with Governor Baker? Yes. Well, you mentioned inadvertently a moment ago Governor Patrick. And yes. just uh, a few days ago, there was an interesting Globe poll that found that 43% of voters say uh, Baker's a better governor than DeVal Patrick. Only 24% preferred Patrick. Do you agree with that? I like working with uh, Governor Baker. He's a hands-on guy. He's strong on management and that's a lot of the problems that uh, uh, we've been dealing with in this first year of his governorship and my first year as Senate President and I think he's doing some really great stuff over at DCF with the MBTA, uh, a few other areas uh, involving technology. So it's really a pleasure working with him. He digs into the details, uh, sets a direction and then lets his executive team move things along. Just for the record, is that an improvement over his predecessor? I didn't have as much contact with Governor Patrick as I would have liked. All right, sir. Uh, on that note, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about charter schools and other important issues that face the legislature in the coming year. So please stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking state politics and policy with the president of the Massachusetts Senate, Stan Rosenberg. And Mr. President, let's talk about the charter school issue. There's a waiting list of tens of thousands of families dominated by low-income people of color, desperate to get their kids out of faltering conventional public schools and into charter schools that, not without exception, but generally are uh, providing a better education. Yet the Senate appears to be a bastion of resistance to lifting the cap on the number of charters that's helped kept so ma uh, keep so many people waiting. What's it going to take to change that? So the reason that the bill didn't move forward last uh, term, uh, 27 members of the Senate voted against it because at that point, uh, Senate President Murray said, vote your district, vote your conscience. And the charter school uh, debate over uh, almost a 20-year period now has focused only on the question of raising the cap, how many more charters and how many more children in charters. There are a series of issues which individual senators outside of the urban areas are having with charter schools as they're impacting uh, traditional public schools in their area. And for the first time, they had the opportunity to put on the table their concerns and say, 
if you will address some of these concerns, the financing mechanism, the uh, admissions policy, retention, uh, the balance of uh, uh, traditional uh, students, uh, uh, ELL and um, uh, uh, special, special needs, special needs and, mm -hmm. and a whole series of other things. And so what's happened is over the 20 years, these concerns have been raised but they've been swept aside and the and the debate has only been on raising the cap both for, both for the number of students and the number of schools I, I have to respectfully challenge that sir I mean I'm uh, been oh, I'm, up just telling, I'm just telling you what the senators are saying as opposed to well th they must have taken a nap and missed the extensive discussions that have occurred in recent years about the funding formula and how to mitigate the impact on communities that lose a lot of funding because the money follows the child that is correct, but the amount of money that follows the child does not cover all of the costs associated. But it's not with as if it hasn't leaving. been talked about. Correct, and it, adjustments it, have been made. Adjustments have been made, but it isn't it isn't fixed yet to the satisfaction of many members. And also, uh, there's a perception, and we're d d drilling down deep on this right now, that other states have figured out a fairer way of funding charters so that having charters would not have a direct impact on the funding of traditional public schools. Well, there's another... So we're trying to figure that out. We just have a brief period of time left here, but th there's another undercurrent here, and I know you're well aware of it, and that is that uh, the teacher union uh, wants charters gone. They, they hate charters. They consider them a threat. They want to kill the baby in the crib. And uh, a, lo a lot of senators apparently agree with that. And you were quoted recently on MassLive.com saying the question on a lot of people's minds is where does this end meaning Correct. the growth of charter schools yes. what are you trying to say there so the issue is if you take the ballot question uh, and you take it to the logical uh, extension and conclusion there is no cap any longer if the ballot question passes and so that's the issue is uh, we when we passed it initially they said 25 charters we're now up to 80 charters how many more charters do we need in Massachusetts for this uh, experimental approach to education uh, to be uh, fully uh, fully played out. Shouldn't the need determine how many charters there are? Uh, well there's the need to make sure that every child gets a quality education no matter where in the system and the tension between the charters and the non-charter schools is what's uh, at play here and it's causing problems. Uh, Mr. President, please come back again sooner rather than later because we have much more to talk about. We'll look forward to it. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Senate President Stan Rosenberg, that's it for me. Now it's back to my colleagues for more WBZ News.